Hey there, everyone. I wanted to let you guys know that this story is part of the Midnight Train series. It's a prequel, but it really doesn't matter if you listen to this before or after. Everything will still make perfect sense. All that being said, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the little bell icon, and, you know, all of that regular stuff. So, all that being said, let's get started with this video. It was late, already approaching midnight when I walked towards an already familiar staircase to reach my train home. The day had been long and stressful, thanks to the fact that half of the office was homesick, and us remaining workers had to compensate for that somehow. So I only wanted to collapse in my bed and sleep for ten hours straight. However, when I reached said staircase, I was greeted with a sign platform temporarily out of commission. Subways will depart from platform 17. I rolled my eyes, turned around, and walked. Part of me was far too tired for this deviation from my habits, but at least the train wasn't canceled entirely. Platform 17 was on the far end of the station, ridiculously far from all the other platforms. The stairs looked a bit older somehow. The railing was already rusty around the edges, and the stairs themselves could use a new coat of paint. But I figured that platform was rarely used, shrugged it off, and descended. The platform was entirely empty. The place had this liminal space feeling to it, huge and empty and doused in cold white neon light. My footsteps echoed through the air as I walked towards one of the metal benches and sat down, my bag tucked between my feet and waited. And waited. And waited. The air was nauseatingly warm and humid and a faint buzzing was the only noise except for my own heartbeat. I was nervous, though. I couldn't name the reason why just yet. While the platforms were always less populated during these late hours, they were rarely empty like this. This was eerie, in the same way an empty school or shopping mall was eerie. Places like this should be alive. I turned to the clock and blinked in confusion. It was a large analog clock, unassuming at first glance, but now I noticed that it had no hands. I rubbed my eyes as if I was simply a victim of an optical illusion, but it didn't change a thing. A white background, black Roman numerals, no hands whatsoever. More than confused, I retrieved my phone from my bag to check the time. Nothing. Where the digits usually would have been were now only dashes. No time. Something was off. There was no doubt about that. Maybe I was just overreacting, just a bit, but I jumped to my feet and hurried to the stairs to get the hell out of there. I'd just call a cab and get home that way. I almost tripped over my own feet as I ran upwards, one hand around the rusty railing, eager to return to the upper part of the station, to the conductors and security staff and travelers, to the safety of the herd. I took the last step and found myself once again on the abandoned platform 17. My heart was racing at this point. I looked around in disbelief, stared at the sign with the number 17, and was too scared to scream. Giving in to my panic, I spun around and tried the stairs once more, hurrying to get up, 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 only to find myself on the platform again. The stairs didn't work. I didn't know how because I had been walking upwards and stairs weren't exactly something that could malfunction, but here I was. 
unable to leave the platform. All right, then, I thought and forced myself to breathe steadily. I just had to wait for the subway. I could do that. Then it would take me home, and I could sleep and forget about whatever this was. I walked over to one of the boards to see which train I had to take to get home. My hands were tightly wrapped around the handle of my bag, but not even that could hide my trembling. The board showed three trains. Nowhere was the destination of the first one. The second one seemed to be coordinates. Redacted was the last one. I shook my head, ran my fingers through my hair, tried to keep my breathing steady, and ended up falling to my knees. My entire body was shaking with sobs. This was terrible, and it was impossible, and I had no idea how to get home. Tears streamed down my face. Sobs echoed through the empty space, and I finally gave in to my desire to scream until I had no air left. The police, I thought in a moment of clarity. I should call the police. No matter how insane my story sounded, with shaking fingers I retrieved my phone again, dialed the emergency hotline, and waited. Hello? I whispered as soon as the ringing stopped. Hello? Police? Police? It echoed back. Yes, oh, thank God, yes, I'm trapped in a subway station. Station, repeated the voice. Hello? Again, the echo. Hello? Shit, I screamed in frustration as the curse was repeated back to me. I disconnected the call. Of course it didn't work. I stayed on the floor, phone clutched in my hand, and waited for something, anything really. I was panicking. My mind was blank. I couldn't think of a single thing to do except wait, and I didn't even know for how long I waited because the clocks still refused to work. When the first train pulled up, I was still kneeling and could do nothing but stare at the tinted window. The doors didn't open, and after what could have only been a few seconds, it departed again. I forced myself to stand up then. If I had to wait here, I could at least sit on a bench and not on the floor. As I looked around, I suddenly noticed a person on one of the benches, and it made me jump. She was facing away from me, but she had long blonde hair and wore a short black dress and high heels. My first instinct was to turn the other way and run. I let out a shaky breath, swallowed hard, and made a single step forward. Not towards her, and not away, just forward. She turned her head then, and her face was upside down. She had all the features of a regular human, a mouth, a nose, and two eyes, but they were assembled in the wrong way, and I couldn't tell if the curve of her red lips was supposed to be a smile or a frown. A scream got stuck in my throat. I turned around and ran down the platform, away from the woman. Every few seconds, I looked behind me, checking whether she was following me. But Although I couldn't see her, I didn't stop. I was out of breath already. My lungs were stinging when I finally stopped as my legs were about to give in. I found myself on the far end of the platform where the neon lights could barely reach. A dollar? The voice cut through the silence so unexpected that I screamed. I spun around frantically, looking for its source, and saw a beggar, half hidden in the darkness, sitting on the ground with a bowl in front of him. A dollar? he asked again. A dollar, yes, of course, I have a dollar. 
I quickly reassured him and scrambled to get my purse out of my bag. If one of these things wanted my money, I'd give it to them, no questions asked. With shaking fingers, I took a dollar from my purse and slowly approached the beggar. Here, a dollar for you, I told him with a nervous smile. I bent down to place the dollar in his bowl, but his hand shot forward and freakishly long fingers wrapped around my wrist. Another scream escaped my throat, but he didn't care. He just ripped the dollar from my fingers with his free hand, stared at me with pale blue eyes, and kept on holding me as he slowly put the dollar in his mouth, chewed the paper for what felt like several minutes, and swallowed. A dollar, he confirmed, flashed a toothless smile, and then let go of me again. I stumbled backwards, quickly distancing myself from the beggar again. You're welcome, I stuttered, tripping over my own words. My breath hitched, my heart was racing. I had to get away from this darkness, away from this strange man. No matter how much I had wished for company before, now I wanted nothing but the loneliness and the white neon light back. I was caught between a rock and a hard place, but I deemed the woman with the upside-down face less terrifying than the money-eating beggar, so I made my way back to the other end of the platform towards the light. The woman was gone when I returned and for the first time since I had entered the platform, I felt some sort of relief. I tried the stairs again. They led me back to the platform every time. Just as I was ready to resign to my fate and sit down on the bench again, a ringing broke the silence. I flinched and turned my attention towards the telephone that was placed next to one of the benches. For a while, I simply ignored it. I didn't want to know what would call a place like this. The next train pulled up then, and this time the doors opened. I took the opportunity to look in and saw several people inside, wearing clothes that belonged in another era, the 50s or 60s maybe. All of them stood eerily still, and their identical faces looked in the same direction. The phone continued to ring. I sighed, walked over, and grabbed the phone. Hello? I asked, but was only met with a static. Hello? Is there someone? But the static continued. Nothing hinted at a person on the other end of the line. I tried a few more times, just out of sheer desperation, but no word came through the speaker. Just as I was about to hang up, someone touched my shoulder. I spun around and found myself face to face with one of the guests from the train. He looked like a mannequin. His skin was flawless ivory. He was bald under his gray fedora, and his face was nothing but paint. He stared at me, unblinking, and when he gestured towards the phone, his movements were stiff. It took a moment for me to understand, but then I handed him the speaker and stepped back. The mannequin made a noise that resembled the static from the phone, and listening to it made me nauseous. Though what choice did I have? The stairs didn't work. The dark end of the platform scared me even more. Walking down the tracks would most likely get me killed. I was trapped and scared and had nowhere to go. I dropped down on a bench, hid my face with my hands, and allowed myself to cry. All I wanted was to go home. After what felt like an eternity, the static finally ceased and I looked up again. The mannequin was walking towards me, one clunky step after the other, and sat down next to me, keeping almost a respectful distance. Are you going to hurt me? I asked. My voice was shaking again. 
He jerked his head from side to side. I nodded. Thank you. We sat next to each other in silence after that. I clutched my hands together and prayed that I would find my way home. I didn't want to die on a dirty subway platform. I didn't want to die at all. I wondered if this was hell, if I would suffer here for eternity. Then the last train pulled up and opened its doors to reveal an almost beautiful interior that belonged in another century. The golden light from inside was comforting. The mannequin put his hand on my back and pushed slightly. I looked at him in confusion, and he clumsily grabbed my arm and pulled me to my feet with him, then pointed at the train. I don't really have a choice, huh? I asked him with a wry smile. He shook his head again. I pulled my phone out and took another look at the screen. The clock showed four zeros this time. Point midnight. Okay then, let's go. I held onto his arm as we stepped over the threshold together. The doors shut behind us immediately and the train drove off, leaving the cursed platform behind for good. I looked at my companion, and even though his painted face betrayed no emotion, he kept a hand on my arm as if to comfort me. I've been here for 24 hours now. The train isn't that bad. The conductor has been nice enough, although he lacks a face. We have yet to stop anywhere, though. I've only exited my compartment once until now. There are things here, things like the mannequin and the faceless conductor, monsters. I'm scared. I don't think I'll make it back home. I don't understand what led to all of this, but please don't make the same mistake I did. Be careful where you go, and don't enter places that do not exist. Because now that I have internet access again, I found out that the subway station only has 16 platforms.